One of the things with lorlapinib, which is a third generation ALK inhibitor, is uh, we started to see that um, it's actually the driver for probably changing how we present data in terms of efficacy in the body and the brain. And in, in the poster, which is gonna be discussed at ESMO, we actually have formally presented not just the overall response rate, but broken it down by intracranial and extracranial. And what you can actually see is that consistently, the intracranial response rate is actually higher than the extracranial. And you go, well, why is that? Well, one of the reasons is, stuff in the brain may be underexposed to the prior treatment. So it's behaving as if it's an earlier line of therapy. Stuff in the body has been exposed to the drug, so there you've got biological mechanisms of resistance. And that becomes incredibly important because you've got a drug that um, the CNS is actually driving up the overall response rate. And if you don't pull it apart, if Mrs. Jones in front of you in the clinic doesn't have disease in your brain, you have to know which number you're gonna quote. And in that situation, it should probably be the extracranial response rate. Lorlatinib uh, is, is well known to uh, certainly have some toxicity, something like over 50% of people will get some kind of higher cognitive function, could be mood disorder, slowed speech, memory issues. That's a big deal. Even if they're low grade, I think for some patients, they're a little scared of it. Um, I actually start patients on 50 milligrams, half the normal dose, and then I go up as tolerated.